All right, welcome everybody here in Twitch and also on YouTube in the future for our next deck. This is Jund Priest. I guess that's what I'm kind of calling this one. We're a Jund Midrange deck, and I don't know, saying Jund Midrange is, you know, that just could mean anything. And so I think I'm going to call this one Priest because we're playing Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Uh, certainly a card that I've been really impressed with just overall. Um, this specific deck, though, we'll kind of see how it works out. Um, we have some early creatures with Incubation Druid and Land War Elf that we really don't want to sacrifice to Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Um, and we don't have very many creatures that we do want to sacrifice. So there's a couple, um, I guess, and like, you know, tokens for Izoni, but... I don't know, so we'll kind of see how it we'll see how it plays out. Um, but there's a few things I'm kind of worried about the deck. So where this deck came from is uh, a viewer sent me this deck on Discord actually, and saying that they've been playing it and doing pretty well with it. Um, and uh, so that's that's where I got that's where I um, I saw this list, and it certainly does look it looks pretty cool. There's just like a bunch of really cool cards here, so I'm I'm really interested to try this one out. Um, I am worried about only having 22 lands. I think that that certainly could be low. And that's, that's kind of like the common thing of whenever I see deck lists is like, uh, the first thing to do is need more lands kind of thing. Um, okay. Was there a 5-0 list like this? Okay. But it was not Jund. Yeah. Yeah. That may be the Golgari graveyard that we're playing later. The Golgari graveyard that we're playing later was a 5-0 list. So that's, that could be the one that you're talking about, Sporvin. Um, but to go with our 22 lands, we, we do have four land or all four incubation druid. So that's kind of like 30 mana sources, even though you can't really count land or elves and incubation druids exactly as lands. But um, that's half the deck kind of being mana sources there. Um, so we'll we'll kind of see, you know, we got the higher curve here. We'll see if like Judith and Priest are kind of good enough, even though we have this higher curve um, and the lower land count. But only one way to find out, really, is to play the deck. Yeah, Priest ability can also add mana if we need it. But then, in that case, we're usually going to be sacrificing, like, mana creatures, I guess. So it'll be interesting to see it play out. You know, like, there may be some, some holes here, but... Yeah, Gutter Bones with Priest is awesome. Um... There aren't gutter bones in here, but I've been really impressed with those two in other decks. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I've played a lot of different uh, Judith and Priest decks, and just calling them all Judith Priest, you know, you can't call them all Judith Priest. No, this isn't a donation deck. This is just somebody on, on the Discord channel. That was like, hey, you may want to try this deck out. It, um, I've been like they they found the deck somewhere else, but they said that they found it do well in like some tournament somewhere, I think, and then uh, um, have been playing it a bunch and having success with it. So this would be Jundith Priest. Uh, let's see. We don't have black mana, but I really do like Land Warolf Druid Druid, but then we're just kind of not doing anything. Even if we get a black mana source. This hand's really close. First, how many black sources do we have in the deck? Um, 3, 7, 11, 15. 15 not a lot. Let's try again. Well, I guess we're keeping this one. Yeah, I'd like to join the Discord server. Um, that's the link right here, Discord. Um, I've been uh, I've been working on getting some upgrades for the YouTube channel right now, and also new emotes um, and some new sponsored stuff. But soon I'll be uh, updating the Discord channel, and I want to really expand it a whole lot. So um, I am planning on doing a lot of work with the Discord channel 
sometime soon. Yeah, that was the problem for Pearl. So Pearl says, even if we hit the, that black source with that first hand, we'd still need to like draw other spells to kind of go along with it. Oh, really, James? Okay. Yeah, I haven't... That's something maybe in the future as a website. In the future, okay. Yeah, because that's, that's something that's not on my, like, to-do list now, but I don't know anything about um, websites, really. But that could be something for the future. Uh, right now, I'm, you know, focused on the, the stream and then and YouTube right now, and then Discord, and kind of growing those. Hmm. Flame of and Risk Factor, huh? So they're likely going to want to cast one of those next turn. Okay, awesome. Well, thanks, James. Yeah, I did pay two life there to play the Midnight Reaper. Um, you know, we could have just... Not, so if we don't pay two life, we just hold cast down up. But with our opponent certainly casting the risk factor, we're not doing any... We're basically just skipping a turn. And I, I So basically I thought that two life was worth not skipping my third turn. But we'll see if it comes back to hurt us. We're trading a card to do zero damage. That's worth it. All right, now Angrath gets to, you know, pick apart our opponent's hand, which is definitely good if like our opponents like risk factoring, they draw a lot of cards. Here and we make monsters. them start discarding cards. It's a new risk factor. All right, I'm going to take this one. No fire, no steel. But future risk factors I won't be uh, taking. I'll let them draw. Because like they'll probably just pass. I take up Angrath. They cast Risk Factor in response. I let them draw three, and then they have to discard one. So they, they only get to draw two. So they're basically just replacing one card with two. Oh, no. Okay. No fire, no steel. Seven to seven. Yeah. Risk Factor and Experimental Frenzy together was pretty normal just because they're just, they don't work very well together, but they're both so good um, that like the games that you don't have Experimental Frenzy, you want like the Risk Factors also, you know, like you only get four Frenzies or four Risk Factors. And so the deck would run out of gas without having kind of both. We can pay four and win next turn. What, what do you mean, Matthew? We can pay four and win next turn. So 
So yeah, we can do we can do six damage right now. I can do six damage. Okay. So yeah, you just meant if we just let them risk factor. Um because I can I can give the Midnight Reaper haste and attack them for four to put them down to three, and then I can activate the other priest and deal another two. So I can do yeah, I can do a maximum of six damage right now. Yeah, no problem. All good. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just saying. If I give Reaper haste with Angrath, we're dealing six. I'm not going to do it this turn, though. I just don't want to play... I honestly just don't want to play no Midnight Reaper. Fire, no steel. I don't think I want to, do I? Yeah, I guess I probably need to. I think we can walk it in next turn even without the haste creature, but taking up Angrath takes a card out of the hand. And if we would have gone Haste Midnight Reaper, then the problem with going Haste Midnight Reaper that turn, because it's two turn clock either way, then we do have to sacrifice the Midnight Reaper. And so we take one and we're at seven, so we'd go down to six. So then if our opponent just drew two lightning strikes, we're dead. And so I think just staying at seven is the thing to do there. All right, let's bring in another cast down, a couple of moment cravings, Death Gorge Scavenger, sure. Duresses, sure. Bronzedon's cool. All right, that's a lot of cards. Um, as far as cards I don't want. Take out Reaper. Replace that with other things. Um, Breeze is usually not very good. Neither is Find Finality or Izoni. Those are kind of too slow. I think I'm going to go with this. Do I want to... Do I want to play Carnage Tyrant? It's probably unlikely that we actually cast Carnage Tyrant. Is the Golgari Zombie Undergrowth. Which Golgari Zombie is it? Izoni is the only repeatable source of life gain. Well, Vraska is kind of a repeatable source of source of life gain if we sacrifice stuff for mana Vraska. But that's also really, really slow. We have to have six mana for Izoni, play it. We have to untap and not be dead, and then we pay some mana to sacrifice some one ones and gain one life each. Which seems really slow and unreliable. Haven't liked the amount of land so far. Okay. You good, Dark Sip. All good. Orzov Enforcer. Would Journey to Eternity make sense in the deck since we have so many sacrifice outlets? I mean, I don't think Journey to Eternity is worth it kind of overall. Like I, just, I just don't think... I think it's just a pretty unreliable card and not not one that you really want. Like, if you imagine like that last game. If we had a Journey to Eternity in hand, it would have been just basically a dead card the whole time. Um, with all that being said, if you need to play Journey to Eternity for some reason, uh, this... 
kind of shell with having extra sacrifice um, effects would certainly be uh, beneficial. Um, I think I probably just need to kill the Steamkin with the trophy. We'll let them draw a card first. So it gives them a little, you know, very, very, very slight percentage chance more that they draw a land. Since that land, you know, that land wasn't out of their deck yet. Okay, no problem, Dark Sip. You're good. We are predictably getting stuck on lands like we ex like we kind of expected. Yeah, this one's Jund. We played the Grixis deck. We already played the Grixis deck. We went 5-0 with that one. And now this is our first match with Jund. You can tell the... There's the list over here. No permanence to get back with the find broker yet. <laughs> so we gotta jund him out. There you go. So many llama coils. So much for our graveyard stuff doing things. Opponents already had three lava coils. Yeah, War, War of the Spark is going to be in standard. That uh, will arrive the end of April. All right, so this is creature cards. Gain life. So our opponent has one creature in their graveyard with the Steamkin. April 12th? Maybe... I thought, like, the pre-release was, like, the 20-something. Like, the end. Like, 29.30. April 12th? That's coming up. That's, like, tomorrow. Ish. Ah, uh, okay. Challenger deck's 12th. Okay. Yeah. Good old one two, holding the opponent back. All right, pre release is the twenty seventh, so that means if they have like the same schedule they had last set, uh, last set they um, let us have the cards on arena before pre release weekend, so you know we may have the cards like maybe twenty second, twenty third, something like that, on arena of April. Grixis Discard prevailed against Extreme Greed Simic. They played Dream Eater, Krasis, Vivian, Reclamation, but Thief of Sanity carried the day. Good job, Hannibal. Um, guess we're playing Vivian and ticking up. I've lost so much already. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Alright, so I'm getting Land of War Elf, even though Land of War Elf doesn't really do anything, but this is what it does do. Like, you know, on the surface it doesn't look like it'll do anything, but I'm going to play, so next turn I'm going to play Enforcer, 
And then I'm going to play Llanowar Elf. And then I'm going to activate Priest and Sack Enforcer and Llanowar Elf. And I, I need to play Enforcer second. Cause, or first, I mean. Because if I play if I play Llanowar Elf first, then they shoot it with Firebrand. So we'll go Enforcer and then Llanowar Elf. And then we'll have priority. I'll just draw this thing first. And then we'll be able to add mana and play Scavenger and eat one of our creatures from the graveyard you and gain a couple stop life. Nature. But now I, with drawing Enforcer, I can just go Enforcer, Enforcer and do that. Same thing. Oh, it's your 23rd birthday on the 23rd this month? Nice, chilling on. All right, I guess our opponent didn't like having six mountains and four firebrands. That's 10 of their cards. One win. Oh, that's called a that's called a golden birthday. Okay. Status statue to combo with Judith. That's actually that's a pretty sweet combo. I had never thought about that one. Yeah, that's a nice combo. Speaking of birthdays, mine is in five days on the 18th. So, hopefully, we get to the 1500 YouTube followers in the next five days. We're like 50 away. And that's a good, good excuse to do a 12 hour birthday stream. Simic Guildgate. Thanks, Eclaus. So I can certainly see our opponent going way over, way uh, over the top of us. That's just kind of what these uh, Guildgate decks against mid-range decks do. Our opponent's deciding not to play a land this turn, which is kind of a bold strategy. Wasn't one that I was expecting them to uh, enforce, but we'll see. Yep, I'm going to be streaming on my birthday. Yep. All right, no red mana. That's good. Um, I want to play Angrath, but we there's no way to play Angrath. Like even if we, you know, we sack two things, we're not at Angrath mana yet. So let's just just keep getting things in play. Put more pressure on our opponent, and then even if they find red source and cast a Gates of Blaze. Uh, we have the Midnight Reaper that draws us four. All right, speaking of YouTube channel, let me f finish out this Grixis discard. It's got about 40 minutes left. It's the 19th already. Okay, get that, get that. They don't usually deal with planeswalkers too no well. No fire, no steel. Down to seven. Discard to Gates of Blaze. Oh no! Coil on Midnight Reaper first. That's that means we don't get to draw lots of cards. All right, that one's ready to go. So we got a one-one. So why not keep a priest open? No, it didn't really feel no like priest was going to be doing. No a whole lot steel. on their turn, but I guess I guess we do get to sacri we could have sacrificed the the Midnight Reaper 
made them lose two life. Yeah, maybe I should have kept a priest open. We all know why the millennials are called lazy, because those born in the year 2000 don't even have to figure out their age. <laughs> that is really nice if you're born in 2000. How old are you? Uh, let's see, what is it, 2019? All right, 19. <laughs> Your crew for my freedom? <laughs> Give me that. A fair price. And the winning blow on the opponent is the opponent's own creature. Just an act of treason right there. Just an act of treason. All right, Duress, come on in here. Um, do I want Thrashing Lebrontodon? Like, Lebrontodon over here can dunk on some guild summits. Don't know if I want that, though. I guess Crushing Canopy, maybe? Maybe we get some more Planeswalkers in here and Cinder Vines and stuff like that. Hmm. Alright, Zonies, not so good against a bunch of Sweepers. That can kind of go. Crushing Canopy for sure. I. It's a lot of cards I'm bringing in. Nah, Judith is good. The damage Judith deals, I think, is important. I'm not sure Priest of the Forgotten Gods is too necessary. Get rid of cast down. Get rid of trophy. Play Lebrontodon. So I do need to lower my curve a little bit. I got a lot of cards here. Set me free. All right, we'll take out troops, taking out the trophies and one priest. I don't have a whole lot of stuff now against um, Rams. Alright, Krasis, Krasis, Angel. Enforcer, of course, can just block a ram with the death touch. So that's kind of cool. No land drop, no land drop. Ugh. All right, so we're gonna add a mana, add a green, uh, use this, have you sacrifice, I'll sacrifice these, these things, 
end. So I can play Vraska Relic Seeker this turn. That's my plan. I make my own decisions. <laughs> you Kill that. Be needing that. Fine Broker can get us back one of these things if we need to. Make a pirate. Attack at will. Um. Yeah, both Judith and Midnight Reaper are non. Um. Or non-token. So we don't really need to play those first. Ooh. What you got over here? A coil? Not anymore. This deck's, this deck's working out now. We're doing our thing. It's been pretty fun. Yeah, Judith. Well, Judith pumps tokens, but then the the trigger to deal one damage to things is non-token. If you were going to be putting together one competitive arena deck to start grinding the ladder, which one would it be and why? I don't know. So, myself, um, what I've played like when I've played ladder has been playing the Bant Flash deck, this deck. But I, I also don't think that my 75 is absolutely perfect. But I, I really like just... I basically think that Bant has kind of everything in the format, and I really like the cards in Bant. Um, so that's what I would be doing. The other one, honestly, I may just go with Grix's discard and just, just, you know, be able to practice this enough to find find exactly what I wanted to do in the Soul Tie matchup, because I kind of like all the other matchups um, besides Soul Tie. So that. That would maybe be my other an answer. I think the Grixis deck is pretty fun to play. <laughs> what you got? Coil? Not anymore. Okay. 2 and 0, match number 3. You know I talk too much. That sounds good. They probably, I don't think they had Coil for a few turns. I think they drew the Coil off of the Hydroid Crisis or like that turn. Because we saw their hand earlier, they didn't have it. So I think they just drew it like that turn or maybe off the, uh, um, what's it called? Off the Crisis. Hey, Godly Forest. Yeah, good match. Yeah. Good match. Um, I think I should have played the Midnight Reaper here, honestly. Yeah, I probably should have just played Midnight Reaper. Yeah, that was that was a, that was a fun game. Um, we had a couple of timely duresses. The the first game, you just didn't have your red mana. You know, you got really stuck on your colored mana there that first game. So that's unfortunate. 
and I curved out pretty well both games. My, my hands were really good, honestly. Even trying to get Priest to work in Mardu, but seeing this list, I think John mate might be the way to go. Um, stop coiling my Reapers. I really like Priest a whole lot. I've been playing Priest in just straight up red black without without a third color and been very happy with it in the two color deck. Well this is and this is about the time that I'm glad that we're only a twenty two land deck <laughs> right now. So you know we can most likely start drawing some things that are not uh, some things that are not lands. Yeah, today's officially Lava Coil Day, right? <laughs> We've had, seen a lot of lava, a lot of lava coils. Ugh. Maximize velocity. Gross. Yeah, that's our deck is good against. Yeah, that is true. A slower deck that's just putting out like one creature a turn. Yeah, we're certainly good there for sure. But yeah, thanks, thanks for the match. Good luck with your rest of the games too. Yeah, we could have played the Would forest like sacrifice instead of a Golgari or <laughs> instead of an overgrown of team. I don't think that that's um, honestly a, a big deal either way. Basic Matt Brown getting in that sub. Six months now for sub number six. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, that gets us... Oh, we... I guess our number says 82 now. Okay, let's see what we got. So, dive down Come to me. would hurt us this time. It's just all... <laughs> I want these cards. I'll take any... I would like any of those. Can't stop a dive down, of course. But we do have Priest of the Forgotten Gods, um, which does seem pretty good against Drakes here. No, my Vivian. Not bad for a mouse. It's Lava Coil Day. The question is, since they can just shock Vivian, do you think it would have been better to Chupacabra the dragon? I could see that. So we'd, our Vivian wouldn't have died to wouldn't have died to uh, shock. That's their third coil, too. We've played against two opponents this league that have had three coils. Your demise won't be quick or quiet. Isn't so good for us. So if I play Judith, we're attacking for two, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we're just going to do this. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna take up Frasca on the Enforcer. 
Why wouldn't you just cast that opt during your own turn? Like, why are you... Why... Why would they wait on that? Like, they could have just drawn, like, an Enigma Drake. Yeah, obviously they found Shock. They could have just gotten, like, another... A creature or something they could have played. Sometimes sacrifice is Kind of risky, just a, one removal spell and they're dead. Kind of risky. Sacrifices must be made. That's not a removal spell. Removal spell here. Uh Do I have a one mana removal spell? I don't. Yeah, our, our Vivian ticked up and found, you know, put three removal spells down at the bottom. That was kind of annoying with our Vivian tick up. No, we can't kill them with Izoni. Izoni doesn't help us kill them. Well, Finality wouldn't have killed their 5-5. Five five. Finality wouldn't have helped us too much. That shock on the Judith is what saved like them opting into the shock and then drawing the Crackling Drake their next turn. If they just opt into Crackling Drake and then untap and draw shock. I guess if they untap and draw shock, they kill the 1-1 the one, one blocker, though. You could have played Izoni, sacked an insect with Izoni, and still had enough mana for cast down trophy. No, I just, no, I would have had, I mean, I, I counted only one left. Um, I counted that taking everything except for my, my one land drop. Maybe I counted wrong, but I counted only one mana left, so I wouldn't have had a mana for cast down or trophy with that. But I, I could have counted wrong. I suppose. All right, Vivian, Frasca. Canopy. Izoni's out yet again. Take out a Judith. We two Judiths. A find broker. Priest and an enforcer. No, Cinder Vines is not good in this matchup. It seems like every time we play against the Drakes, people want me to bring in Cinder Vines when I have Cinder Vines in my deck, but it it's only good if you have it on turn two. Okay, by good, I mean it's only useful whatsoever if you have it on turn two. And um, it's a horrible draw later on in the game. And just even just spending two mana to deal like, you know, like let's say you're spending two mana to deal. You know, five, six, seven damage. You still need like other cards that help you win the game. It's just, it's really just not worth playing. Enforcer, I mean, we can't just play no creatures and play Priest of Forgotten Gods. For, like, Priest is pretty good here of, like, being able to play around Dive Down and stuff. And we need we need creatures to go along with Priest. 
So Enforcer is just a creature that we that kind of goes along with that. Um, it so it makes like our other cards like Priest, Judith, Midnight Reaper, all those cards better, is what Enforcer does. It's not particularly strong on its own per se. I do like duress against drakes though. I like duress against dive down decks. Okay. For Askable Guard Queen would have been a better card to kill the Enigma Drake, but I was worried about like a dive down swing back at Vraska. I wanted just another body on the battlefield. This is, of course, the problem with playing the Chupacabra last turn. As long as we win, nothing else matters. Vraska doesn't kill Crackling Drake. Uh, Vraska kills things that cost three or less. Crackling Drake costs four. So it certainly would have been better for us to play Vraska previously against the Dingma Drake and then Chupa save Chupacabra. Um, but I didn't want to have that plan against the dive down. So much ooze. Really oozing over here. Everyone is expendable. Yeah, so question is when should you elect to go first or draw first if it's your choice? You should elect to go first. Just go first. Certainly the best thing to be doing. Basically, always go first in standard. Hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, and, have, and just kill the Incubation Druid with Vraska. that thing out of here yeah like every time basically it's there may be some very weird circumstance that you don't want to go first but just do it every time you'll be better you'll be better off 
Um, do I want to sit back and try to protect Vraska Golgari Queen? Besides, with this incubation druid. Um, I don't remember what day I played the Persistent Petitioner's deck. If you see it in Stream Decker... It's whatever day it says on Stream Decker. Which I guess I can kind of look here. It's also, of course, on the, it's on the YouTube channel. Uh, let's see, it says three days ago um, on Stream Decker, so... That's when we played it, three days ago. I'm saving the 1-1 one, one flyer to be able to block some kind of flying creature. Um, it wasn't good in standard. We tried, we tried it out in standard first, and it was not good there. But then it was good in popper. Yeah, limited is a little bit of a different animal as far as... Uh, playing first and second. That There are certain times in, in limited if the format's really slow, especially if you're playing a slower control kind of matchup, like after board, um, that you want to choose to be on the draw. Then the extra card is more valuable. Uh... I do have five mana cards, but I think I'm okay sacrificing this forest. All right, good. Do I miss modern? A little bit. Not a not a ton. I like standard more than modern. I grow bored with this fight. So if I go grab Judith... Judith and Priest? Already played three shocks and two coils. <laughs> so if I Alright, so my plan, I think, was to just play Priest, because if I played Judith, I could attack with the, the Chupacabra, and I could, you know, deal four damage, basically, to a Crackling Drake. Um, I just gotta block that thing. Yeah, no, it was a good spell pierce for sure. Hold this lightning rod? Thanks. I think we're gonna lose this one. Alright, still in it. Unless our opponent has something. Not in it anymore. 
We just kind of drew not way too much of our like little creatures. Not enough removal. The entrancing melody on our incubation druid obviously was huge. You know, gave them all the mana in the world instead of us. That entrancing melody really killed us. Wait, still, wait. No, still two. Two wins and a loss. So the big thing that like really hurt us that last game was the sequencing on like going Golgari Queen and then you know playing Chupacabra first before Golgari Queen. Thanks, James. Um, that that really hurt for how it ended up. I I played, I played like the better line against Dive Down, but our opponent not having Dive Down and then having Crackling Trick follow up it was worse for us. Thanks for the bits, James. Cool. Just just now turning in, tuning in. Are there any changes you'd make to the Grixis discard deck? Uh, no, actually, no. I liked I liked that seventy five. I'd play that seventy five again. All right, put on five cards. As long as they do not have Curious Obsession, this should be an easy win. But Curious Obsession means that this just got a whole lot tougher. This Judith Priest combo should be really good against Mono Blue with like just the extra triggers and everything. I made it to Diamond with Esper Angels. That's awesome. Way to go, JPC guy. Have you. Have you um, have you been tuning the deck at all for me? You know, because I haven't played the deck a ton. I'm getting some hype in the chat for that. Um, so yeah, have you made any changes to to the deck that you'd recommend that that I would that I should do? Oh, you can never beat this combo, Mike. Yeah, it certainly seems like a good combo. Because our opponent had a battlefield just a little bit ago. Not anymore. I mean, I guess Siren Storm Tamer would counter the ability from happening. We got a couple two ones out there also now. Two one flyers. Oh, okay. You've just been playing it in, in uh Okay, you've been playing it as is in best of one. Cool. Play around uh, Spell Pierce because the mana the priest adds. So that's pretty nice. Just shock in with that stomping ground there. Yeah, Zeroth. Cool. Yeah, we'll play the Golgari Graveyard deck. We'll be later tonight. So, yeah, if you're going to miss it, of course, you got the YouTube channel there. 
All right, another question. Hey, Todd, I'm on a game of Arena playing a Esper Mill deck against a Nexus of Gate deck. I have to bury ultimate on, and my opponent has no permanence left on the battlefield. Ever seen water burn? You um, will. But they have the last seven, four cards in his deck are Nexus of Fates, and he has seven cards in hand and keeps drawing and no discarding fire, Nexus at the end of turn. No he can't steel. win. Any, any idea how I should proceed? I mean, it's for on Arena, it's just kind of up to you to kill the opponent. Um, so at this point, it's not like, you know, you may mill out first. Like you have to, you're going to have to do something like get rid of a couple cards in their hand or something. Cause unless, unless you can stop that, then you're going to lose because like you would just draw your 60 cards before, you know, before that happens. You, you have to have something where you don't draw all your cards. Otherwise, uh, that'll be a loss for you. Like, even just like in a tournament, like it's, it's unfortunate, but that's how it is. So hopefully you have something. No, green hat, man, that's, that's not, yeah. So, um, that's honestly like they, they get to keep playing there because until it's like your opponent can win, like, yeah, that is like the win con. The win, con yeah. So the opponent does have a win win condition, which is the opponent, which is um, you decking first. So like they're they still have a chance to win the game. That's not that's not something to report an opponent about. They're playing to their out still. Uh, let's see, cast down, moment of craving. Well, our opponent did mulligan to five, so it certainly made it a lot easier for us. Uh, to find the video, where's the Grixis video? It's going up on YouTube right now. It says it has about 30 minutes remaining right now. I want duresses. All right, let's get these out. Finality, I suppose, is pretty good. Kind of just cutting down the curve a whole lot. It's too many cards taken out. All right, Vivian, get back in here. Yeah, that, and that's what I was saying. That, that's, that's all the opponent can do is just discard Nexus and wait for the opponent to deck. No, he's not casting Nexus because he has zero permanence on the battlefield. Because the other person has a Teferi Emblem and exiled all the permanents. So you, you can't cast Nexus with no permanence. So he just has seven cards in hand, draws a Nexus, discards it. And that's that's acceptable. No, Thousand Eyes has not done anything. And I don't think the Thousand Eyes should be in the deck. From... What we've played so far, I would just rather have other cards than a Thousand Eyes. Um. If the other person is to just has to fairy tuck, then yeah, that would just be a draw. I don't know what you do then on arena for that. It's kind of the problem with the, with Nexus on arena. Just a problem with Nexus in general. Sunbird's Invocation is a, is a fun card. That's a card that we saw more play. Maybe I need to build Sunbird's Invocation deck.
So we'll see if they use a dive down or a storm tamer. All right, so storm tamer. They're still gonna kill it. They get an extra mana, but of course they they already have a good amount of land. So, but the cast down was a good draw there of allowing us to double spell and take out the tempest gin. So they're just down to two cards. We have two cards also. You know, like we're both down to two cards. Um, us having Choops and Judith. I guess that's true. I could would rather have them counter a trophy. So if I just start with trophy, they probably counter that. I guess that's a good point. I think I should have just done that. Yeah, the problem with Sunbird's Invocation and Wilderness Reclamation shenanigans is that you have to play Wilderness Reclamation. And I just don't like that card. I just don't want to... Don't want to play that card ever. But you're right, like... That's, that's how you can make a card like Sunbird's Invocation certainly better. Is with Wilderness Reclamation. Honestly, it's pretty greedy for me just to cast that cast down. I probably should just let the Judith trade with the Trickster, and then if they try to save their creature or dive down, then I cast down. I think that was a bad play on my part. Um, I think that was just pretty greedy of going with for the cast down. I don't think that was a good play by me. If I target the Trickster, they can just sack the Storm Tamer anyway. Um, I can't block, can't block a, a Storm Tamer. I can block Trickster. That thing's really big. Yeah, my last thing for me on that that Nexus and Teferi Tuck thing is I I think that if the rules say that that's not a draw, I don't like that. I think that should just be a draw. Um, if there's like something about people having to break whatever loop or whatever, I think it should just be a draw. Just that's, you know, I don't know exactly how that would work out. You know, I'm not a not a judge, but I think it should just be a draw. The one time I've experienced something like that with. Uh, both players having to ferry loops um, was in a team tournament where I was playing with uh, my teammate had uh, a to ferry loop and the other person had to ferry loop they both they both had like they could both just draw to ferry play it and tuck it and neither one could stop the other they're both down to like no cards in library and nothing in hand that mattered and they just made it a draw and I, I feel like that's the or like that was the ruling was that it's a draw and I feel like that's a fair ruling instead of anything else but of course I'm not a judge so I don't I don't know exactly what the ruling is the wild wasn't meant to be contained sometimes restoration means retribution
Your 7 0 with the. Is it control Drake? So, way to go, Dark Zip. Good job. Meet my newest friend. going to die anyway. Alright, so... We're honestly not looking too bad here. Looked like we were going to die almost assuredly before that turn, but that was a really good turn, having the Enforcer and Vraska. Because I get to chump, chump lock the Terramander here. So, new to MTG, do they normally release cards that create controversial decks? Not, not really. Not stuff like, not stuff like this. Like this is, this is pretty um, abnormal. I think like Nexus of Fate is like really the the main thing. You know, like Nexus of Fate is pretty abnormal um, for how controversial it is. If, I'm, if I minus Frasca, I die because of Siren Storm Tamer. Next turn, though, I can minus Vivian Reed and minus Frasca. I can minus them both next turn. This turn I couldn't do either. What my opponent needs to do, my my opponent could certainly have lethal here if they if they just attack me with Terramander where I have to chump block and then have Siren Storm Tamer attack the Vivian. And then in that case, um, in that case I can't double minus. If our opponent has a dive down though, of course we're we're out of luck, but... Nexus was played some before RNA. Not as much Feel as it is the now. Wrath of Scala. Um, there, was a, there, was our, there was already a Nexus Turbo Fog deck that um, was somewhat popular at the last Pro Tour. So yeah, our, our opponent could have won that where the battlefield was if they just took Siren Storm Tamer and attacked Vivian. And then attacked me for five. Then I couldn't minus my Vivian. And I couldn't block the Storm Tamer because I had to block the uh, Terramander. I was a little scared of a Trickster there for how our opponent's like looking at their hand and stuff. So I didn't end up attacking with the Lanwar Elf. The end's just a And I think we're going to win this from here. Looks really good for us. I'm just going to... Now attack with Lanwar Elf. And have Priest activation available at all times. Yeah. That's what my screen says. Precisely 1,000 viewers. Welcome, everybody. Not 1,001, not 999. Precisely 1,000. So, yeah, I think we should be able to win here, even though... Our, so our opponent could have won uh, previously, like how I said, if they would have attacked, made that other attack. So if you're new to the channel, um, I also have a YouTube channel as well. If you miss any of the miss any of the decks or if you want to see any of the replays, feel free to check out the YouTube channel there. YouTube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG is where you can find that. And let's go ahead and sacrifice this. So they'll lose two life. We draw a card. Glad they're not taking the priest.
And I'm doing a 12 hour stream whenever we get to 1500 YouTube followers. Which we're getting pretty close to. Earlier today we we're at like 1440. I don't know where we're at now. Fourteen fifty-five. Almost there. Yeah, and then I can just do the twelve hour stream for my birthday. Birthday is on Monday? When's my birthday? When's the eighteenth? Yeah, Monday. I like being able to just to continually tick up Vraska. Didn't have to minus it. Uh, what do I think of the best of one format? It's, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it's not for me, but of course I've I've been playing Magic for a long time. I I really enjoy sideboarding. Um, I really like that part of Magic. I like uh, tuning your 75 to try to uh, try to beat what your opponent is uh, doing with their sideboard plan. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. I'll be turning 33. I'm pretty old. Yeah, same day as Baruch. Yeah, the same birthday. Very nice. Um, what do I want for my birthday? Oh man, haven't thought about that too much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Alright, so Vrasa's ult is at 9. Oh, wait, could I... I guess I could have just ulted last turn. Oh, I guess I wasn't really paying attention to that. One more scratch and you'll die in agony. I could have just done this last turn. Oh, well. Wait a turn. What's up, Zerf? Doing good today. We are... Having an awesome day. We are eight and one now on the day. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so it was risky because opponent could have had Trickster. It's still about that risky. We're at seven, like a Trickster isn't killing us. Um, but we just drew a cast down, which certainly made it better for us. They just had, you know, they didn't have Trickster, like, that whole time. Hmm. Tim looks pretty good. James, the early birthday cheer. Taking over that top spot on the leaderboard. Thanks, James. Uh, let's see. Let's lead with Druid. We're playing against a Golgari or Sultai deck. This will be a good test. So Judith is better mana wise, but I actually kind of like how this Enforcer can just check the Wild Growth Walker. I like having the Enforcer to block out um, early because I want to be playing Planeswalker next turn, right? So I want to be going with like Vivian and Angrath next turn. And so this Enforcer is a, a good blocker. The main question is which Planeswalker do I want to play? <laughs> Please run your crew for my freedom. <laughs> A fair price. Attacking. Could certainly be fine finality, uh, and them just getting their creatures back. Nah, they just playing hard. convenient, an excellent choice. <laughs> Angrath's really good. 
No fire. Yeah, no, this is our no second steel. second Angrath deck, and our next deck has Angraths in the sideboard. Um if I play Judith and attack Karn for three. Just go Judith Enforcer, or I can just play Vivian and start ticking up. Just go Judith Enforcer. My retribution will be swift. Karn does get like that extra crappy land every turn whenever it ticks up that I make them discard with Angrath. No, uh, getting, yeah, getting Druid out of finality range would certainly be a good thing. It's not nec it's not a necessary thing too much. Because even finality, their Karn's dead. I do not feel your efforts are And we have, we have our five mana for stop. Vivian. No fire. So they're no down to two cards. The problem is, like, I couldn't activate, like, Let's Incubation Druid no last turn and play Judith, like I which I certainly wanted to do. Farewell, and thank you for the lesson. So, we're looking real good here. Hey, Cryo! With a donation for a donation Semi deck, slap the a sideboard on this baby is. and run. All right, I could do that. Um, Frasca. So what if? Okay. So what? What day and what time? Do you want me to? Um, What day and what time? All right, let's see. If I if I steal this and I play Judith, that's three five. That's five damage coming at Vraska. I don't really like my Angrath dying the though. Wilds are my shield. So I'm just gonna tick up. No fire, no steel. Uh, that won't and then I'm not, me. I'm just not blocking. If they want to attack with this 2 2, I'm just not going to block it. Alright, see, what was, what deck did we get? No. Oh, hostage taker. That's bad. Good draw for them. No Mardu mercy. Glass. Glass of the Guild Pack with Mardu? Oh, nice. Fire this deck looks sweet. Fury. Tomorrow or Friday last slot. All right, so I can do either one. So just tomorrow tomorrow last slot works just fine. All right, so Angrath's certainly ticking up. Can't do anything else. No fire, no steel. So I want you to find a land... I think I want to find a broker back right now. Not really. Balance comes. Oh, that's a painful land. Yeah, Honor Guard is so good. Perfect. All right, tomorrow. Last. Right, we got to just protect Vivian here. 
I think our opponent should have sacked Hostage Taker, honestly, and not, not one of those, uh, those tokens. I'm very, very glad. Yeah, links are links are good. Y'all are good. I'll destroy all that you hold precious. All right, so if they attack out at Vivian, wow, they're just not attacking Vivian. They have a I really hope they didn't draw contempt. Wow. That hostage shaker draw, then the contempt draw. Gross. Playing this. Thanks, Auto Tapper. Now I can't play Fine Broker. Kill this thing. I'll remember this. And I'm going to kill my Judith. Get my Judith back. And they kill that thing. And so I will sacrifice it with this other token. Make them sacrifice a cr creature. Well, good news is we can find Broker back and Grath or Izoni. We have two, two really good cards to find Broker back. Um, all right, so they're just going to folly back, hostage taker end step. They are at 11. Um, so we can make them lose 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, yeah, we have lethal. So we're going to find broker back, anything, doesn't really matter what. Um, just not another Judith, I guess enforcer. That'll give us a 1-1. One, one. Doesn't just doesn't matter. Play a creature. Sack the two new things. Deal some damage to them. Put them down to nine. Oh, did I not have lethal? No, yeah, yeah, because they, they lose the two life here. I was like, I, I thought I just counted it, and it was exactly lethal. Yeah, because they lose the two life there. Um, just play this thing. And then... Attack three, six, seven, eight, nine. Or like three, four, three, five, seven. There we go. Ugh. Ugh. I say... What's going on? All right, so they're playing Sultai. What do we want to do here? Planeswalker seem kind of important. If we go more Planeswalker, more Carnage Tyrant, that could certainly be a beneficial thing. But then, uh, my cutting. Maybe no Golgar Golgari Queen here. I mean, Assassin's Trophy is good at taking out their Planeswalkers, but it's not a spell that I kind of ever want. Um, so I'm going to just take it out. I 
I can't really just bring in three six drops. I can't do that. My 22 land deck chilling over here. Three six drops and a five drop. That doesn't seem very realistic. So maybe no Carney T. It's either no Carney T or no Izoni. Um. Maybe no Izoni. I just don't need Izoni in this deck. Them having finality to just like kill Izoni. I don't want them to hostage taker my Izoni. Yeah, Trophy is certainly good against Planeswalkers, but it I don't want it against anything else. Um, the extra mana is is honestly a really big downside in this kind of matchup. Uh, with them having you know, Krasis, and they have lots of ways to use the mana. They have so much card advantage that the extra mana is um, really, really good for them. And so I just don't want Trophy in my deck in this matchup because of how um, how much we get hurt by them getting the extra mana. It is really unfortunate, though, with, um, with me not playing... Uh, If I'm not playing a Trophy, then I don't have any way to remove a Planeswalker from the battlefield immediately. No, this isn't a donation deck. This was this was a deck that somebody sent me on my Discord channel that they recommended. You know, they're like, hey, check out this deck. It looks cool and stuff like that. But it wasn't an actual donation deck. I'd, I agreed with them. I was like, yeah, that does look pretty cool. And so I wanted to play it. Land drop. Yeah. Vraska. Or sorry, Vivian can find more lands. He goes to Vraska and Carney T. Wild animals I like. People, not so much. This is looking pretty good for us. Meet my newest friend. Um, if you want me to definitely play the deck, um, a it's twenty dollars for a donation deck. Oh, well, I messed that up. Oh well. And you know, information about that down below. Uh, you know, you click like the donation banner um, about that. But if you just want, if you just uh, want to suggest a deck for me to take a look at and think about playing. You can always do that. Easy easy ways just to message me on Discord. Um, this is the link to my Discord channel. And then I, I may or may not play the deck. All right, four and one. Ooh, it's final boss time. Just realized we had a final boss last time. We didn't play our final, bo our final boss music. Final boss music. We're... Sorry, Prisma. Uh, I mean, Teferi is really, really good. It's not one of my favorite cards, though. Down, down.
ulti again. Our last ulti opponent, you know, not having anything to do. You know, only playing two lands. Not so good, so. Um, this would be a better test here. Any thoughts on what the the new big product announcement in a few week, weeks may be? Honestly, I, I haven't heard anything much about it or or didn't really even know didn't really know anything about it. I didn't I honestly didn't really know there was a, a big product announcement in a few weeks. Yes, yeah, so actually, I don't even know. Yeah, I saw that Final Fantasy VII and IX are coming to the Switch. Pretty excited about that. Um, I have them still on... I still have both of those for PlayStation. And I have both of those on my phone. But I'll still probably get them both on the Switch. <laughs> they are awesome. Um, you you can only expansion a copy of Banefire if Banefire is for one. <laughs> uh, Banefire CMC does change with the X. So if you Banefire for like six, then the CMC will be seven because it'll be red plus six, and you would not be able to expansion that. Or I guess yeah, X is less than four. You're good for expansion. So yeah, so not a not a very big Banefire. Beasts. Are no one said restoration was painless. I could pay two life there and have my Incubation Druid untapped as well. With us already at 14, I didn't necessarily want to do that. But honestly, with this matchup, maybe that is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm not sure. That's That was like a, a, a kind of a tough choice in my opinion. And creatures being in my graveyard isn't the worst thing ever. With um, Izoni here. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Certainly gonna shock and get this priest in play. Especially before Izoni. Hey, Sultan of Rainbows, good evening. Yeah, to see past deck lists, you can find them all here, exclamation point, decks. So you can find all the ones from today, uh, even the two that we haven't played quite yet, and all the ones from, like, yesterday, the day before, all that kind of stuff. Is my caps lock on? All right, time for Priest of the Forgotten Gods to take over.
Am I shocking again to play the Llanowar Elf? I decided I'll just shock and sack another creature, draw a card. Drawing cards is kind of the name of the game. Might as well draw some more. And I could see our opponent having finality here. So I like I like kind of turning in one of these one ones into a into a card. And there we go. Down to three in hand. We have Vivian, though. You can't stop nature. There is like a four mana blood artist, I think. No, we're we're on the second deck right now. We're on we're on J Jund Priest, actually. We have a similar Golgari graveyard kind of deck here later, but we are on the the second deck actually. So haven't played Mar uh, Mardu Angels yet. Um, so I have a, a version of Mardu Angels that I really like. It's one of my uh, favorite decks in the formats. Probably the most successful deck that I've played. Uh, the deck that we're going to play up next with Mardu Angels isn't mine. We're going to try... Um, we're going to try the Mardu Angels list that was a 5-0 list from the other day. Because uh, there's just you know different, different card choices. There's a lot more 2-drops and a Johnny Adversary of Tyrants. And so we're going to kind of see how those work out so uh doing that one uh here up next the wilds are my shield And even though we've been activating this Vivian a bunch, we're still... We're not quite there yet. Yeah, we're Now we're really far behind. Because of Hydroid Crisis. Correct, expansion needs to be 4 CMC or less. Correct. Track team, day is going really good. Life is good. Um, we're going to be having new emotes soon. They're being worked on. We'll be having six new emotes real soon. Yeah, that'll be fun to play a different kind of Mardu. We still have some good draws. We still have more Planeswalkers ourselves. Angrath, Vivian. Um, you can find finality. Wouldn't be so bad for us.
We have 14 creatures in the graveyard. So if we do get another Izoni, that's a whole lot of creatures. Yeah, but we've seen Krasis just take over the game, though. Certainly. I only have five mana. So I can't cast Izoni this turn. I think where my life total is at, I kind of just have to get the Chupacabra. Doesn't feel so good though. That's pretty good. It's bigger than uh, the first Hydro Crisis, or the second, or the third, or the fourth. Casting a fifth. Um, Wizards releases a uh, deck list that went 5 0 in competitive leagues on Magic Online. And those are the deck lists that we're referring to with the 5-0 deck lists. They're released on their on the uh, Magic Online website, mtgo.com. So we're bringing in the, the Planeswalkers and Carnage Tyrants, cutting the Izonis. The Izoni is just not a necessary card. Um... What else did I do? I took out Trophy. Yeah, that's what I did last time. Let's try it again. Uh, down a game. This will be tough. Well, we have a scry. If we just continually draw lands, Druid, then Reaper that draws us some cards, get towards Vivian, but it's really risky. All right, I like this more. Um, You want to keep the last one because you hate Mullen to five. Yeah, Mullen to five is not. This is certainly not a feel good. That's for sure. Certainly not a feel good. Underrealm Lich is not good enough. Unfortunately, there are much better five mana spells. Than Under Realm Lich, unfortunately. I like Under Realm Lich, it's a cool card, but. Isn't good enough. Oh, 
All right, I really like seeing that. So they are very unlikely to have another contempt. So can we get this land? Ugh, didn't get the land. So let's just activate the incubation druid so we can I'm sure be able to use that to cast the Vraska the next turn. If we would have drawn the land here and just played Vraska, you know, we are so, so, so far ahead. You know, it's just... It's not too likely our opponent has another Contempt. You called it. Chris called it, saying their opponent was going to attack into the Incubation Druid. He said, guaranteed. The belligerent make way for your captain. And we're going to be ticking up, you know, going towards the ultimate here, making these pirates. They have their own Vraska. Prepare the gallows. We've got soon you will be left with But nothing. they minus. So we get to Chupacabra, kill their Jade Light, and then kill their Vraska. All while ticking our Vraska up to ten. So we'll see if they have finality also. I mean, even if they do, we have a Vraska in play, so we're not doing so bad. It certainly looks like a finality to me. Same thing. Fight them, you maggots. <laughs> hey, Bear Army. Hopefully no contempt. No contempt. Yeah, it looks like we're winning this. Oh, uh, they they didn't even keep black mana open for a potential contempt. I mean that's that's what they were thinking with the the draw one card, but you know, auto tap got him. Alright, so Cry of the Carnarium. Interesting card choice on our opponent's side. I maybe need to switch up this Orzhov Enforcer Priest Judith Midnight Reaper life with Cry of the Carnarium. I can do that by adding in a bunch of duresses. Taking out one Judith, one Enforcer, one Priest. Um, not exactly sure what, like, Death Gorge Scavenger f is for exactly. Uh, we played it against Red, and it did it, it did its thing against Red, gained us some life and stuff. We could, you know, we could play it here to make their find finalities and stuff worse. Um... I don't know if that's better than Judith.
Yeah, it's okay in the matchup. I don't know if it's better than other option than, you know, like the cards we have right now. Like I said, like, I don't know if it's better than Judith or not. But still be able to find, you know, in a late game. It only takes out one, one creature. It takes out, like, their best find target, potentially. Um, but it's also just going to be something that I just... I don't like Deathcore Scavenger against Explore creatures. I don't think, you know, it just doesn't match up well against Branchwalker and Jade Light, where their Branchwalkers and Jade Lights are drawing lands compared to our thing that doesn't. Um, Judith, you know, gets the triggers so that Judith can, like, help help other things take down bigger things or, like, chip off, um, chip away at, like, Land War Elves and stuff like that as well. Scavenger is just not so good against those. And if you have Scavenger early, like this, it doesn't really do anything. So it's... It's kind of tough. Um, so next turn we get to Duress. I certainly want to Duress before their turn 5. Before they can play, like, their 5 mana Planeswalkers like Vivian. Uh, I want to be Duressing there. It's also good to play Duress before our Planeswalkers to take Grass's Contempt. Contempt, Find, and Vraska. Well, let's take Vraska. That card's kind of too, too difficult to beat. Sorry, Angra. Never seen water. Your crew. He's got like five mana removal ship. plus gain three life, basically. A fair price. But we we just need to do with where our life totals at and everything. Next turn, of course, uh, going to be paying two life and playing Carnage Tyrant. Damn your eyes! Ram a new course free. So what do they have to find over here? Jade Light and Mer Branch Walker. I can't contempt this one. Yeah, they could just block the dino. But yeah, they're just chilling with some contempts over there. So if I attack with Carnage Tyrant, like, do I want to attack and let them double block with uh, Jade Light and Branch Walker for it? Um, of course, I can Chupacabra and make it so they can't double block to kill it. I think I'm okay if they double block and kill this. Because the problem with playing Chupacabra there, if I play Chupacabra and let's say I attack, they take it, they're down to 10, but they get to contempt my Chupacabra 
and um, hit me for five. And then I'm down to five. And we're kind of in a rough spot there. Another fine finality is not good for me. And they drew another another Jade Light? Oh yeah, they, they explored a Jade Light into the graveyard earlier. Well this is we're in a bad spot now. Find finalities. I'm just going to expand my board a little bit and see if they use any removal on these, but I kind of expect them to just have the same turn they had last turn. Uh, finality back Jade Light, Jade Light, and play double Jade Light again. How many Jade Lights have they played? Not sure how many, but it's been a lot. See if you're worthy. There goes one contempt. Come to me. Don't have to be worried about Midnight Reaper with me being at uh, ten for sure. <laughs> yeah, Bant Flash is difficult to play. That is true. Not an easy one. Oh, any news on the Sultai control? No, no news. Uh, Tyrant. At least they've gone through all their find finalities. So they're not going to be finding that Carnage Tyrant anymore. Speaking of fine finality, that's a good draw for us. We can get our Carnage Tyrant and a Chupacabra back. And let's choop down this 4-3. Oh, wait. Was I supposed to just cast finality? I'm just so used, so <laughs> used to using find all the time. Wait, Finality would have actually just wiped their whole battlefield and gave me a 9-8? Yeah, maybe I was supposed to be casting Finality there. Whoops. They would have, of course, had Carnage Tyrant plus Jade Light here and still been able to, to block my Carnage Tyrant, so... They would have been able to trade, but we would have been able to get rid of everything of theirs. Hmm. Still kind of works out, though. Funny. So we'll do that play this time. So I wanted to be able to get my Carnage Tyrant and have them play more creatures into the finality, right? So I was just thinking Balance ahead. Comes. That's what I was doing. I was like, well, they have that Jade Light in their hand. That that Jade Light plus the Carnage Tyrant could be a problem. See, thinking ahead. Where do I attack? I guess I just attack them, put them down to one.
No one Dill. knows the wilds like I do. All right, so they can play a big Hydroid Crisis, but we got Vivian, so we're good there. <laughs> so they're at five. Five won't help them. So we are good to go, Vivian. For the win. How this thing goes and is easy. this is nothing. That's a win. All right, got we beat Sultai twice. So two wins against Sultai. Yeah, really, really bad timing here on this lag. Looks like there's just a whole lot of lag that's happened right here at the end of this match. Real bad timing on that. But I'm hoping for the YouTube video, this that lag isn't there, you know, because it's just recording a video, so it should be good there. Um, but we defeated the final boss. And... We've gotten 2,100... Gold and 40 gems, so the deck was pretty sweet. Now, we weren't punished by only having 22 lands as much as um, you would think. Uh, so we were able to hit land drops quite a bit. And it just kind of showed like the land drops and Planeswalkers were really good. I think the worst card in the deck is Izoni. Um, I think this is, this is probably the worst card in the deck. And so I wouldn't recommend playing this card. I think that just having... Like, Planeswalkers is a better place to be than Izoni. And maybe just, like, a 23rd land and another Planeswalker. Um, maybe. Uh, the Carnage Tyrants are pretty sweet. But that Carnage Tyrants may be a little bit more of a sideboard card, though. Um, so. There we go. All right, so that was Jund, uh, Jund Priest. Uh, good showing from Jund Priest there. So. There we go. If you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, and that will be it for John Priest. Thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.